When a church is closed, there's a five times greater rate of suicide. And we've had alcohol increase, uh, drug increase. It's just been awful. They, they have released convicts into our streets, shuttered our schools. 65% of our restaurants will never reopen as these members of our community have lost, lost their life savings over a virus that we now know is not what they said it was supposed to be. So what did you think when you got a cease and desist letter from the county? We were prepared for that. Uh, we had hosted communion service on April 4th when the governor declared that the church was non-essential. He allowed cannabis distributors to be essential, liquor stores to be essential. But even if we followed the CDC standards and took a sanctuary that held 400 and did communion for 10 people, completely following CDC standards, the governor still declared us to be non-essential, though we were exercising a sacrament during our Holy Week. And when I moved forward to do that, uh, I knew the council would have to censure me. And so I resigned that Saturday night uh, from the council, knowing that the governor was not going to relent and my fellow council members would be uh, left having to censure me uh, and, and still having to censure me. And then um, May 31st, after the governor had embraced the Black Lives Matter protests, we realized this wasn't about uh, COVID. Uh, we had already done all the data. We, we, we saw the empirical data. Our death rate in the county is one one hundredth of 1%. And since May 31st, we've been wide open, no masks, no social distancing, and we haven't had one case of COVID in the entirety of our church, but they still slapped us with an, an emergency restraining order saying on a scale of one to 10, we were a 10 as far as danger to the community, which is beyond me. Wow. Rob, you were also a former mayor there. And, and let us know what has happened since that time. Well, I was uh, mayor in 2019. And as many viewers know, in 2018, we had a tragic shooting in our community where 12 of our young people were killed. Two of them were from my congregation. We lost Officer Helis, who bravely uh, went into the borderline and, and stopped the shooter. Although the shooter committed suicide, he, he, for all intents and purposes, helped stop that. And we dedicated the freeway to Officer Helis. Uh, as mayor, I dedicated the park to the victims. I love my city. I love my county. I don't want to bring any harm. And at, at first, we all realized that we don't know the severity of the virus. But as time went on and we had the empirical data, we realized it, it affects a certain group of people. We broadcast in the parking lot for 65 and older. But everyone else, come in. It's time to worship. And, uh, and, and that's, uh, when a church is closed, there's a five times greater rate of suicide. And we've had alcohol increase, uh, drug increase. It's just been awful. They, they have released convicts into our streets, shuttered our schools. 65% of our restaurants will never reopen as these members of our community have lost, lost their life savings over a virus that we now know is not what they said it was supposed to be. And it's tragic. We love our neighbors. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Pastor, it's just got to be devastating to you to watch these things happen in your community and then to think that fines are being imposed on you even to try to help out in these situations. Now, while there may be true public health issues, what should the church's response be? And I'm not just speaking for you. You're, you're in the middle of, of a battle in probably one of the most embattled states. But speak, speaking to pastors everywhere, what should church's response be right now? Well, people need fellowship. Watching church on the Internet is like watching a fireplace. You can hear it and you can see it, but you can't feel it. And, and the Lord has commanded us not to forsake fellowshipping with the saints. And when we look at the public health crisis, uh, we, we need to be wise. We need to look at it clearly for what it is. When I was before the judge and I swore to defend, to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, our public uh, request for records, uh, we started to realize that the, the tragically over 100 deaths in our county that were attributed to COVID, when we looked at the data, only two of the little over 100 deaths, only two were from COVID. The rest were with. We had an a overdose uh, person die, and they died positive with COVID. That was counted as a COVID death. They've used this data to paralyze our people, ruin their life savings. And I would just say to my fellow pastors, you're peacemakers. You don't like conflict. I get that. But the citizens of your community need you to push back 
Because liberty is not man's idea, it's God's idea. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And our church is, has gone from 400 to over 2,500 in a month. And, it's, and, and the people darkening the doors of our church are not typical churchgoers. They're skaters and surfers who've, who've lost their beaches and their skate parks have been filled with sand and their streams of liberty have dried up. So they've gone upstream and they've come to the source, Jesus Christ. Pastor Rob, thank you so much. I want to encourage the TBN audience to pray for Pastor Rob and the work that's going on there. We're, we, we, we've got to join together in this time and really stay focused. To let the church be the church.